Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the podcast. We continue looking through the book of First Thessalonians. And as we've already discovered, uh, the Lord is leading Paul to say a lot of things to this church in Thessalonica to encourage them and to exhort them. He's in the process of answering questions. And the reason we know their questions is just the way he responds. For instance, we're at the fifth chapter right now, the First Thessalonians. In the first verse, he says this. Now, as to the times and the epics, brethren, you have no need of anything to be written to you. So why all of a sudden the the change of uh, uh, subject, why all of a sudden sort of a transition right here? Well, he's going through uh, questions that they had sent to him, and he's just dealing with them. He's not reiterating the questions in any way. He's just giving the answers to them. You see him doing this in the book of Romans uh, with a group that he never even met before. He was just dealing with some issues that he knew was going on. So now he's answering a question. And the question related to times and epochs. That's a great phrase, isn't it? And you think, well, what is that about? Well, when you read the balance of his response here, you see that he's talking about the days yet to come, what's going to happen in the future. And he's telling them, now, as to those things, he says, brethren, you have no need of anything to be written to you. Well, why would it be that they have no need of anything being written to him? Well, it's because he had already addressed these issues with them. He had already talked with them about this. He had already taught them. And I find this amazing because remember, he's writing back uh, to this group of believers uh, just a few months after they actually had uh, responded to the gospel message. And he was not with them a long time at all, just a matter of weeks that he spent time with them before he was forced out of town. And so he had told them things about the times and the epics. There were other things that he hadn't told them about. We saw that in the last couple of episodes. Uh, What happens with you if you die before the Lord returns? He hadn't told them what what that was about. So he explained that to him. But now he's saying you have no need of anything to be written to you because they know what the truth is. So he's just encouraging them now with that truth and just reminding them of what the truth is. So what is the truth? Well, the next verse tells us. For you yourself know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. So he had taught them that, that the Lord is coming and the day of the Lord is coming. Now, that day of the Lord is a really important phrase. You see it throughout the prophets. You see it throughout uh, the New Testament. You see it expressed as the day of the Lord. Sometimes it's expressed as in that day. And, of course, the context is what teaches us and leads us into proper understanding of what is meant by that word day when it does occur. And so he's telling them, you know what the day of the Lord is going to be. It's going to come like a thief in the night. But he's going to give them more information here. Verse 3, while they are saying peace and safety, so that they would be the world, while they are saying peace and safety, then destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains upon a woman with child, and they will not escape. That labor pain with child thing is used as a picture quite often uh, in the end time scenario, though not always in the same way. Okay, not always in the same way. So you have to be careful with that. Jesus uses it in Matthew 24, and he says these things are just the beginning of birth pain. Okay, and so you see that certain things are going to happen to the body of Christ. Okay, uh, the great tribulation, for instance, and things leading up to that is just the beginning of birth pangs. But right here, he says that this destruction is going to come upon the ungodly, the worldly, and it will come suddenly on them like labor pains upon a woman. And he says they're not going to escape. Then verse four, but you, brethren, are not in darkness that the, that the day would overtake you like a thief, for you are all sons of light. And sons of day. This is really important. Quite often people will quote and say, well, yeah, uh, the Lord's going to return and he's going to return as the thief in the night. Well, right here he's talking about the day of the Lord. Okay, the day of the Lord. So is there a connection between the day of the Lord and the return of the Lord? Well, there actually is. When the Lord returns, the day that he raptures the church, if you're using that as the point of demarcation as the of the return of the Lord, the rapture of the church actually precipitates the day of the Lord. Okay. But 
to the world, it's going to be coming like a thief in the night. As a matter of fact, they're going to be saying, peace, the safety, all is well, everything is great. And there's a lot of details that the Lord gives us about that and how the world is going to react, particularly to the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist. They're going to think that all is well. But then he tells us that this day is not going to overtake us as in darkness because we're not in darkness. The day is not going to overtake us like a thief. Jesus actually says some things about this. That we will not know the day nor the hour, but we'll know the season. Okay, We'll know the season of when this day comes. And that's what Paul is saying right here. He says, but you, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day would overtake you like a thief, for you are all sons of light and sons of day. Then verse 5, <coughs> we are not of night nor of darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us be alert and sober. So that's what he's encouraging them to do. He's, it's not to be slothful, not to be lazy, not to be uh, uh, lackadaisical with anything, because this day is coming. Okay, We are sons of light. We're the sons of day. So what are we supposed to do? We would realize we're not of night, not of darkness, verse 6. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us be alert. Let us be sober. And you say, well, is that sober means not drunk? Well, that's what it does mean. It means not drunk. It also means serious. The next verse helps us. For those who sleep, do their sleeping at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. So it is the idea of uh, don't be living the type of life that will catch you unaware. Verse 8 says this, but since we are of the day, let us be sober. You know, let us be serious. Having put on the breastplate of faith and love as a helmet, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. So this is a picture that you see in Paul's writing in, uh, when he wrote to Ephesus. The idea of faith and love and hope, the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet of the hope of our salvation. And then he gives us a marvelous detail. So listen to what he says in these next three verses. Verse 9, 1 Thessalonians 5. For God has not destined us for wrath, but for the obtaining of of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. So he's picking up that idea again of what happens to those who have gone asleep, who have died. So he says, whether we're uh, in the presence of the Lord and he brings us back to our glorified body, or if we're still alive here, it doesn't matter. We will live together with him. But verse 9, the first part of it, for God has not destined us for wrath. Okay, You see that in Revelation 3.10, where, where we see that we're going to be spared the wrath of God. That's what's being spoken of here. The wrath of God, the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is God's wrath being poured out upon unbelieving mankind. Okay, Now, there is a wrath that will come against us, and that is the great tribulation. That is the wrath of Satan against the Jews and against the true church. We will undergo that if we're still here upon the earth, okay? If you're still alive, the church will be here, okay? The church will be raptured at some point in time in the Great Tribulation, but not before. So God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. Now listen to this last verse, 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Therefore, in other words, in light of all this, Encourage one another and build up one another just as you also are doing. A proper understanding of the day of the Lord, a proper understanding about the times and the epochs, a proper understanding about what occurs when one does die should bring comfort. Remember at the end of uh, verse uh, chapter 4, he said, comfort one another with these words. He says the same thing here, to comfort one another, encourage one another, build up one another with these words. And then he says this, just as you're doing. In other words, keep on doing what you're doing. Folks, we need to do this more as the body of Christ. Uh, we do not uh, receive enough encouragement and exhortation and building up of one another in his word and through the spirit and the word of one to another. If we do that, it will transform our life and what we're doing for the Lord's kingdom. Again, I'm Dale. Take these things before the Lord, and I'll see you again next time.